I think we'll go ahead and, and get started. Um, it's, I think, 10.04, so, so I think we'll, we'll move along. So good morning, everyone. My name is Jillian Kitchen, and I am the communications lead for the WIS Caregiver Careers Program. Welcome to our third webinar in the mentorship series um, on uh, WIS Caregiver Careers CNA Mentorship Program. Today, we have... Uh, Pat McBride and Natalie, <laughs> thank you for <laughs> joining us um, to share and answer all of your questions that you may have about the mentorship program, about WIS Caregiver Careers. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we did ask in advance for anyone that had some questions. So we have some preliminary questions that we can kind of um, start with, but if anyone had um, specific questions. If you wanted to use the Q and A, otherwise um, we can also um, allow. If you have any um, questions as well, you can just unmute yourselves um, and uh, chime in at any point in time. This session is for you, and so we look forward to hearing from you. With that, I'll turn it over to Pat and Natalie. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We're super happy that you here that you are joining us today. Uh, as Jillian um, reminded us, we're really here for you. And any questions that you have, we would love for you to unmute yourself, and um, we're available for you. And so, with that, we'll open up the lines for questions. And while we're waiting, um, we could certainly go back and forth with questions that we've received in the past, um, if that works for you, Pat. I know you have a, a, a question that you've received that you're very passionate about, if you want to start us off. Sure. So I know um, one of the questions is something like, um, you know, the frustration around we we spend money on these programs and people don't show up or we interview for them and they uh, we think they're a great candidate for either mentoring or menteeing and they don't show up. And, you know, why would we want to um, financially put money into this program if people are not showing up? And basically what I want to say is that with all the retention programs that are out there, this one is relatively cheap. Um, it is a day of training. It is uh, frequent touch bases between care partners, which is pretty priceless um, and does not cost any money. As well as, you know, people are going to not show up. It's just, it's just human nature, right? It's just, we've got to accept that. Um, it's an economy now where there's lots of opportunities for people to work and uh, they change their mind and they think it's a great program and then they just don't show up. I know we have it happen all the time and I think we just have to manage that expectation. But as far as retention programs go, um, this one is not super expensive. And even if you have people that don't show up that are mentees, the, the good thing is you have mentors who have been specifically trained on all kinds of things that they weren't before. So they've all had competency trainings. So they're learning um, some of the shortcuts that they probably have had in the past that aren't correct. Um, they're learning how to do things the way you want them to be done and the regulatory requirements around those. Um, you also have mentors who learn things like how to communicate, how do adults learn, teamwork, all kinds of things that have opened their eyes to other ways that they can contribute to your organization and its growth and dealing with any kind of issues that might come up. So it's um, it's a great program, whether or not you um, have people that come and become mentees, You even if you don't, you have mentors that certainly are contributing more because they've been through the program. Mm -hmm. Yes. I completely agree with that, Pat. And um, I know our communities are really appreciative that all of the competencies are completed um, and we're survey ready at any time. 
So anytime state comes in, we have a file with every uh, individual with the competency. So we're survey ready and we're also risk and compliance ready. So there's a lot of benefits on that end as well. And like you said, a lot of confidence and camaraderie and pride in their work and um, a deeper connection with um, our residents, which really is the most essential part. You know, they, they really have that connection with our residents and, and you they know, take great care of them. Right. And we've had the program for, you know, 10 years now. So yeah. we started out slow, um, mm -hmm. but our retention rates are really, really quite well, quite high compared to the national average for our industry or the people we care for. So mm -hmm. um, it is successful. And um, I just really ask for you to give it a shot because it's worked yeah. for us. Stick with it. Are we seeing any questions in the in the chat, Jillian? No, no questions yet. But um, okay. Pat, now, do you want to, for those of you that weren't able to join prior um, webinars, do you want to give a, a very brief um, introduction of you and, and where you're from and your background? And then um, for all of those that are participating, if you have questions, again, you can post them in the Q&A. You can hit the icon of raise your hand, um, or um, you all have the ability to unmute yourself, so you can also unmute and chime in at any time. But before we do that, Pat and now, do you want to just give a brief intro for those that maybe weren't able to, to join prior webinars? Sure. Natalie, you want me to go first? Sure. Okay. All so right. <laughs> I'm Pat McBride. I'm the Vice President of Clinical and Compliance for Christian Living Communities. We are based out of Denver, Colorado. We have nine communities in Colorado um, that we manage or own, and those include nursing homes, memory support, assisted living, independent living, adult daycare, and um, home care. So we have um, used this program in all different settings with all different um, people. We have had this program, the mentor program for 10 years, a little over 10 years now. We started with CNAs and now we have it also with nurses. So any new CNA or nurse is assigned a mentor and they go through this program. We have, how many mentors do we have now, um, Natalie, across oh, the Oh gosh, I wanna say maybe right around 60. Okay, so we have um, mentors in each of our communities for each shift. Um, because it's important that the uh, mentee, which is the new hire, works alongside their uh, mentor. Our program is set up that they offer support for an entire year in the program. They, in the beginning, go over um, basically the skills, so the competencies. How do we want you to do your job and how does the state of Colorado or Wisconsin require you to do your job? Um, and then we have touch bases and evaluations every month between the mentor and the mentee. Um, so they become their best friend at work. Um, when we started this program, we had a really bad retention rate, like 30 to 40 percent, um, much like probably some of you have currently. I know it's um, it's a problem across the whole country. I think we're at 50 percent now average in our industry. Uh, we are now between 80 and 90% for nurses and CNAs in the first year retention rate. Um, so as you can imagine, that affects our quality of care for our residents. They don't have strangers taking care of them. Um, we have people that know the residents well and their simple pleasures. So not only resident satisfaction is improved, but also staff satisfaction because they're not working with a lot of agency. We still have agency. We still have, you know, bumps in the road, especially through COVID. So it's not all um, rainbows and butterflies, but we're much better than we were before. Um, and when we started this program, we had a, a poor retention rate and I did a lot of interviewing because this was my first um, role at CLC was um, staff development and what can we do about retention, which is you know, a, a big problem to, to um, kind of digest. So what I started with was I talked to all the people that stayed and a lot of people that left. And I found, and I asked them, I interviewed them, why did you leave or why did you stay? And I found two things that kept rising to the top. 
One was, let's talk about why do people stay? Because we have best friends at work and I stay for the residents and I'm really good at what I do. And why people left was I didn't have someone I could go to to talk to with those stupid questions or the informal rules. I didn't have a best friend at work. And so I didn't feel comfortable. And um, the only time I knew I wasn't doing a good job or doing what, what that community wanted or CLC wanted was when I'd made a mistake. And that's when I knew I wasn't doing it the right way. And that's not a good learning environment, right? Not having somebody you can talk to and say, there's no stupid questions or to have a structure that teaches the way that your community specifically wants things done. Um, so people were leaving. They didn't feel supported. They didn't feel like they could do any right, right? They were like, the only time I know I'm not doing right is when somebody is telling me, you know, empty the trash or that's not how we do it here. And people want to do a good job at work, right? So we've developed the mentorship program based on those two premises. We create a best friend at work with frequent, frequent um, communication and talking about how things like how adult, adults learn and how you can be communicative with your mentee and how to work as a team and all those kind of things. And then we have the set of competencies, which are specific to um, CLC, and I know yours are going to be specific to your communities in Wisconsin, and it helps people really know how to do their job the way you want them to do it. So our, our success rate has been really um, super proud of how well we've done with that. So Natalie, what do you want to add to that? <laughs> well, lucky me, I don't have anything to add to that. That was amazing. <laughs> Uh, my name is Natalie Knopp, Director of Clinical Staff Development, and I've been really blessed to uh, oversee the program for, I believe, the last five years. My goodness, that's hard to believe. And this was really, um, as Pat shared, her, her baby, and I know she had difficulty passing it over at first, and uh, it's just such a pleasure to be able to teach those uh, informal and formal leaders at our communities um, to be a mentor and really have that elevated status and that elevated role and really just the pride that they have um, in knowing that their supervisor or their peers look at them as being leaders within their uh, within their community and then giving them that formal status. It's really exciting because it really sparks um, it sparks their interest again in their position. It sparks their interest um, in giving our residents that elevated exceptional care. Um, and it gives them the permission to teach others um, their passion, which is our residents and taking exceptional care of them. So it's really, it's such a wonderful program. And uh, for us, for CLC, we do teach um, the mentor program every January and every July. And I really like having a system where we um, onboard new individuals two times a year. It gives those that are um, starting within our community an opportunity if they would like to be a mentor to um, become that mentor within that next cohort. So it's really exciting. I, I, I just adore it. And it looks like maybe we had a question come through. Um, ask a question. Okay, it looks like uh, Jillian asked with questions. Um, the other thing that I really love about um, the mentor program is that you can expand it to look any way that you want. Um, so for us, we've expanded it over time to include um, our mentors coming up with um, solutions for problems that they see on the floor, and it engages them and gives them uh, permission to be creative and to problem solve and um, be part of the solution. And so one thing that I can think of is... Um, we have a stop and watch for our new mentees. And so when we have a mentor that um, possibly would need um, just a little reinforcement or talking to, or there's um, potentially a problem that is seen, it can be headed on really quick so that we can retain that individual. 
Um, that is a system that our mentors came up with. So that's really exciting. And trialing new products. Uh, so we were looking at different rosies and we asked our mentors, hey, can you trial these new products? You tell us what product you would like to use because they are the ones that are going to use the product. So why not purchase what they, they really like? So there's a lot of opportunities in addition to training uh, the new individuals coming into your communities. I would also add, Natalie, that the mentors oh. also as a group have done some training for our community. So yes. they've done empathy training. Absolutely. Um, we also have trained our mentors to be the first interviewer for new yes. hires. Um, because they, of course, will know what's a cultural fit for their mm. neighborhood, their communities. Um, and, you know, there has to be some training around interviewing, right? What to ask and not to ask. So they have done a really great job doing the uh, initial mm. interviews. Yes. Um, and touring in the communities for new mm -hmm. hires. And um, so they've just been, um, they go to quite often attend our care conferences. Yep. Um, and, and every year they come up with something new to do or yeah. to get involved with. So yeah. it's been very helpful. We use them when we were looking at um, determining hero pay during COVID. We mm. uh, consulted them. Um, they, they really have a pulse for what's going on in the community and they love to, uh, to share their opinions, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Those focus groups are amazing to have their insights. Absolutely. Natalie, while we're waiting for a question, do you want to answer yeah. the one that came up about can LPNs be mentors? Oh, you bet. Um, so we know that um, it's a challenge right now in many communities with uh, having enough CNAs to be mentors. Um, it's preferable, of course, to have peer-to-peer -peer mentorship for, you know, for a CNA to mentor a CNA because they can best answer uh, questions and they really know what's going on with that position. However, uh, anyone from a, the clinical team could certainly be a mentor. So an LPN could certainly mentor a new CNA. Um, sometimes we have to get creative, right? And we have to uh, look outside the box and think of solutions that are going to work within the parameters that we currently have. And so, yes, absolutely, somebody can. A clinical we wouldn't want maybe an office manager to mentor a CNA because they really wouldn't have that bedside um, advantage. They don't have the, um, the skill set that is needed to teach someone else the skills that are needed um, and on the floor. So it would need to be a clinical person. I would also add, too, that it would be important not to be in a supervisory hat that that person wears, that, mm -hmm. that a mentor mm -hmm. should not be um, a supervisor or at least come across as one. This is someone yeah. that supports um, and is seen as a uh, best friend at work, mm -hmm. not someone that could or would quickly write somebody up for making, asking a question or making a, mm -hmm. a beginner rookie mistake. Yeah, yeah. That is a very good point. It's a different dynamic uh, when it's a supervisor that is a mentor. Yeah. And that an LPN point. might be seen as an informal supervisor. So exactly. you would just have to sit down and make sure everybody understands their role as a mentor. Yeah, yeah. that is a really good point. Feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. So I, you did such a good job that there's no question. I know. I'm thinking, wow, all right. <laughs> and I'll just chime in here too that for anyone who's online, you may not be able to take off or to put on your video, but you can unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and if there's any trouble or um, issues with that, feel free to put it in the chat too. We're monitoring that as well. 
can anyone share if they've started the program and any oh, obstacles yeah. they've they've um, come across or any success stories? That'd be great to hear too. Yes. And it's good for peers to hear that as well. Or any yeah. feedback you have for us about the training? Is there something mm -hmm. we, we could have worked on a little bit harder or emphasized or anything that might have been redundant that we talked about a lot prior? We have another training coming up in the spring. So yeah. any input you have would be very helpful. We have a quiet bunch today. My goodness. Yes, we do. I know many of you have reached out via email and talked mm -hmm. to us directly. So maybe we've answered mm -hmm. most of your questions. Mm -hmm. And that does bring up a good point, Pat. You know, we are certainly available via email. Uh, at any time, we just ask that you email both Pat and myself. That way we can tag team it and get back with you really quick. Um, and we have answered quite a few emails. So you're right, Pat. It may be that we we have touched on all the questions that individuals have. And certainly as you're trying out the program, uh, questions arise when you actually start the program and you really get into uh, the nitty gritty. So feel free at any point. This, this uh, Q&A session certainly does not end our relationship. Um, we, that relationship is extended. So please feel free to reach out at any time. And let us know what's working for you. Some of your yes. success stories. I'd love to hear those. Oh my gosh. That, that would fill my bucket. Absolutely. If we don't have any questions, I can also address some of the more general questions we got. Um, about the program. So um, we did get some questions about um, promotion. So um, how with Caregiver Careers, um, how the partnership can be promoted and whether or not there's an opportunity to engage social media. Um, so I did want to just, oh, it looks like we, we did get. We have one. I missed the first video. Oh, perfect. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Well, perfect. Not that you missed the first video. We're sorry to have missed you, but perfect that the chat does work. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting a little worried too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so the, um, the, our sessions have been recorded and they are available and they have been downloaded. So I think I'll have Jillian uh, answer the question as to where those can be located. And we certainly empower you to watch those videos. And again, if you have questions after you watch that, make sure to reach out to Pat and myself. And I am um, just gonna jump in. I have another um, yeah, responsibility that I have to go to. So I want to thank everyone and um, encourage you to reach out and share your stories and your questions. And I'm gonna leave you with Jillian and Natalie. You're in good hands. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pat. Hi, Pat. So um, yeah, I think for the for those of you that missed the um, any prior recordings those, uh, or webinar series um, events, those are recorded. Um, the recordings can be found on uh, the WIS Caregiver Careers Employer website um, and or with the materials. And I'll post the link here shortly. So I'll just pick that up. But um, and I think... We have, oh, thank you, Pat. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess, do we want to, do you want to just, Natalie, briefly do an overview about what was covered in those first webinars while I'm looking for the link to post, just to mm -hmm. give everyone who missed those an idea of what, what was included if they want to mm -hmm. watch them? Yeah, so the, um, the first webinar went over how to integrate the mentor program into your community. So it's really the nuts and bolts of the program. Uh, 
It's how to select the mentors, the interview process for the mentor um, program, how to set up all of your systems, um, including payroll for the bonus. Um, and uh, it's really the full program overview from A to Z on how to implement the program within your community. All of the um, all of the materials are also located on the WIS Caregiver site um, that Jillian's going to give you the link for. And so we would encourage you to look um, at all the materials. And again, we can answer any questions that you have specifically for those materials. So that first part is really how to integrate um, the mentor program into your community with all the tools that you need. Everything has been written out for you from A to Z. I mean, truly, it's it is fed to you. Everything has been completed for you. Um, and then the second webinar is the mentor training itself. And so our leadership uh, teams, your leadership teams, went through a webinar that we teach to the mentors for their onboarding. And it's really teaching them how to be the mentor, how to uh, take on this leadership uh, role within the community. So again, how adult learners learned, communication, um, how to deal with stress, how to uh, greet your new mentee at the front door, how to retain the, uh, the mentee for the year, the touch points um, that are needed, it, it really gives all of the, um, the tools that the mentor needs to be successful within their new position. And so that's the second webinar. And then we, um, when we finish that with the, the Q&A, which we're doing today. So by the time you have um, the first two webinars, really, and the tools in hand, you are really ready to, to jump in and, and start your mentor program. It may look daunting at first. There's a lot involved in the mentor program, and that's why um, we try to make it as easy as possible with having all of the tools available to you. You can add your own logos onto the tools. Um, they are... Um, they are available for you to change the, the logos or you can, you can keep the WIS Caregiver uh, logos that are on there as well. But really it's ready for you. It's um, ready to implement and to start. We would suggest if you'd like to start, start off slow. Maybe three mentors that you um, would like to start in the program and just really go through that program, um, get your feet wet, and um, I think you'll find that it's um, much easier and less daunting than you may think, um, because, again, everything is really laid out for you. The nice thing is that you don't have to create anything. It's all been created. It's all all available. Yeah, I think those are the easiest programs, right? You can just download the forms, add your logo, print them off. Put them in a binder and go. <laughs> and speaking of logos and promotion, I think yeah. um, I did want to just briefly touch on one of the questions we had gotten in advance was how can we promote the program? Mm -hmm. What resources are available? Um, so I did um, in the chat just put a link to uh, the mentorship materials um, where you can find those where the recorded webinars are from the past, but also the employer website. So the employer resources website contains um, promotional materials. Um, and I'm just going to do a quick sharing of my screen to give a little um, preview of what you can find there. Um, Natalie, can you see my screen? I can, thank you. Perfect. Yes. Then, um, so here, and this will be posted after uh, the webinar, but here are the links to the employer web pages. 
And on that page, there are um, opportunities to download recruitment brochures um, and print those out. There are also sample job announcements. Um, there are videos that you can use for promotion of the program um, from the perspective of a CNA, from real CNAs, what the job is like, what, what their opportunities and um, experience has been like. Um, and you can absolutely use our logo and promote it on, on Facebook and um, social media as well. We encourage that. <laughs> so um, I wanted to address that. I think we also had a question about um, how, whether or not this program is being promoted in high schools. Mm -hmm. um, and we are working with HOSA, which is um, Future Health Professionals High School uh, Organization. Um, I'd also encourage employers to reach out to their local high schools. Um, we do have a PowerPoint available for, um, for use in high school. So if you want an intro to your high school or you want us to kind of set something up, I'm um, reaching out to our service team. We'd absolutely be willing to do that. So, um, wow, that's yeah. amazing. Um, that is such a great avenue to tap into. You know, those individuals in high school that maybe don't know what they want to do, but they have love for taking care of others. Um, what a great way to kind of sway somebody. We have free education. We have free training for your next, you know, for your career path. And we have a way to um, support you in that. Oh my gosh, that, that is amazing. Wouldn't it be really cool if um, a community could record one of their residents or a few of their residents saying, we want you to take care of us. We want you to come to our community. We would love to have you and embrace you. Oh my gosh, uh, such a great opportunity. I wish I would have had free education, you know, for knowing <laughs> I knew that I wanted to be a nurse, you know, and what a great career path. Maybe somebody wants to be a nurse or a PA or a doctor. Um, what a great avenue for them to get into this profession, um, get paid while they're, while they're pursuing a, another elevated role within the, in that career path. So it's, many opportunities. There are so many wow. opportunities. And a lot of these partnerships too, we had a question about like what partnerships mm -hmm. have been successful in promotion of the program. And mm -hmm. um, it's one relationship at a time, right? So yeah. Um, yeah. building those relationships within your communities. Um, mm -hmm. We've had those um, locations that have been really successful have built connections with their local mm -hmm. tech college, with their high schools. Um, and our service team is certainly um, willing, um, ready and able to mm -hmm. assist with that if needed. Um, but um, those that have been as successful are kind of building those relationships one, mm -hmm. one step at a time. Yeah. Um, if, um, if their community also partners with um, CNA schools within the um, community, that is a great avenue as well. That's you a know, if you already point. have cohorts coming to your community and you partner with um, a community college or a technical college that offers the CNA program, what a great opportunity to get those individuals into your community and hire them. They're already interested. Oh, absolutely. And I think the la last question we had had about just like generic information was how long the funding for this program was going mm -hmm. to last. Um, and um, the funding that we have um, expires one year after the um, emergency, uh, the end of the public health emergency and or um, July, 2024, whichever comes first. So um, we, we would anticipate probably that it is going to be probably extended to January, 2023 and most likely extended through April, 2024. But um, it's really when, when all the funds are used up, we currently have about 2000 training slots available. And so our goal would be to um to fill all those slots and and once the funds expire um that would be the 
you know, the program. So I think um, just checking out the Q and A in the chat too. I don't know if did you have anything else you wanted to add on that, Natalie? Um, I, I know uh, a few have asked, how do you keep your mentors engaged for one year? So our program is one year. And what we found is that if we can retain someone for the one year mark, they are generally a long term employee. So that's why we set this up for ourselves for the one year mark. Um, and so the one way, well, there's a few ways that we have been able to engage um, our new employees for the one year. One is that we have the bonus structure set up with touch points for a full year. And so every time that our mentor touches base with our mentee um, with the form that has been designed and that's in your toolkit, so you don't have to create anything, um, those touch points are at 30 day, 60 day, 90 day, 120 day, six month and one year um, to, again, uh, capture that friendship because what we found is that's why people stay within their positions or at their community is the friendships that are formed. And then also, as we know, um, your our questions when we first start at a position are very different um, at the very beginning of your uh, time within the community to that one year mark. So questions change, dynamics change. Uh, they get more in depth and they get more trusting with time. And so that's why we prescribed it for the one year. But also our mentors, um, they stay engaged again. They're trialing new products. They're coming up with new procedures. They're problem solving. They're being engaged in the interview process. Um, in empathy training, they also help with uh, the mentor training with the skills portion in the afternoon. And so we find lots of different ways to engage our mentors so that they um, that they stay as a mentor long term within our community, but also they get that engagement with those new new associates for that one year. So we we have had that question come up as well. And I was trying to see if there was any other questions that really um, came up. Um, we have had one, uh, one community reach out to us that already has a mentor program. So if you already have a mentor program, uh, what they're doing is they are um, going through the WIS Caregiver Careers um, program, and they are integrating some of our tools and processes into their mentor program, which is really exciting. And um, I have asked this individual if I can check back with them in January, because I'm interested also in what they are implementing to potentially integrate some of that into our mentor program. Um, because we all have different um, different elements within our mentorship programs, which can really complement and enhance each other. So that's another reason that we're really excited to hear from you and your community. And if you've implemented and if you already have a program, how you're implementing and integrating the programs together. So that's um, certainly these are not separate silos. If you already have a mentor program, you can implement and change and add and do anything that you would like with our tools and our processes and put that into your program as well. And I think that um, those really touched on the questions that we've received in the past. Anything else that you can think of? No, I think that was that was great. And we covered the the questions that we had gotten offline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I think we'll just pause one more time and see. Okay. And don't be shy. You can unmute yourself. No. We welcome your voice. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. We are in the same shoes that you're in. 
you know, we have communities, we're on the floor, we get short staffed, um, we have call offs, we work the carts um, as nurse managers when we're short staffed. Um, we have uh, individuals that we have interviewed and they seem incredibly amazing and we're super excited and we have everything ready for them and they no show. You know, it happens. It happened prior to us having the mentor program. It's going to continue forever, unfortunately. Some individuals are just not respectful and, and that's just the way it is. But when you can retain someone as a long-term employee for relatively low cost, you know, if you think about how much it costs to um, just find that individual on a job platform and go through the process of the uh, the drug screen and the background check and um, all the interview processes. And uh, it's very time consuming. It's very uh, expensive and it takes a lot of time from you as a nurse manager doing things that you could be doing other than the hiring process. I mean, imagine how much free time that can free up, even if you can retain, gosh, 10% more than you are now. That's a huge difference over a year. Um, and we're just so passionate about this because we know how impactful it has been at our communities for that retention. You know, our staff are happier. They're not seeing the revolving door like they used to. Um, our residents are happier. They're getting consistent care from, from individuals. They have relationships and we know their preferences. Um, our leadership teams are happy because they're able to do their jobs and not focus on uh, the hiring process. I, it, there's just so many benefits. We have better survey outcomes. Um, we have more consistency. I'm, gosh, it's just such a win, 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 win. If you can just start the program, start it off small, just get, you, get your feet wet. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look beautiful. You know, we have been doing this for 10 years and we tweak it and change it and revamp it. And, um, you know, we we change it up also. You know, that, that's the beauty of it. it nothing is steadfast. It's a, a, a living document. We change it all the time based on, on what's going on. So, gosh, I just, oh, I'm, I'm just so excited to have individuals try it out for themselves. I think that they'll they'll be like, why am I waiting? <laughs> and I'm hoping that those that are on the, on the webinar have tried it, have started it. Well, that was going to be too. We have about 15 minutes left here. I wanted to kind of check in with a group of what yeah. were you kind of hoping to get from these webinars, or if this is your first one that you're attending, yeah. what, um, what were you, what do you want to learn or what would you like to take away from, mm -hmm. um, from either conversations with us or the materials, um, you can post it in the chat or, um, or, or like I said, on mute. Um, but we're just kind of curious, what are you hoping from a mentorship program or, um, from these webinars that, um, could help you? Or why did you hop on the Q and A today? You know, did you, did you have a question that you're like, oh, I'm hoping somebody else asked this because I'm too shy. <laughs> but think of this as peer to peer, truly, because we're, we're right where you are. Well, since we have such a quiet group, I think um, we will leave you with our contact information, um, which I'll just scroll ahead here on. Um, so if you have individualized questions or you want something specific to your situation, um, feel free to reach out to Pat or Natalie. Um, both. <laughs> yes, please both. Yeah, that way we can really get back with you quickly. We tag team it. Perfect. And then if yes. you have more 
general questions about um, WIS caregiver careers, um, we've put the, the service team contact information down there, our phone number and our email, and um, we will post these uh, few slides uh, in the um, in the document that has all the recordings and the materials so you can access it there um, if you need to for reference. With that, thank you so much for joining us. Natalie, thank you so much for, for coming and sharing your expertise with us. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having us. We appreciate it. We're excited. Excited about others getting on board. We are too. And we can't yes. wait. We can't wait for you to try out your, your CNA mentorship program. And um, we're here to support you along the journey. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. With that, have a wonderful rest of the week. Thank you.